Okay guys, the first run after removing the secondary butterfly plate. I have not had it out yet. The bike seems to be warmed up. I may have to recalibrate my EJK a little bit with these new changes. The new change, I should say, it's not change it is. I only removed the butterfly plate, that's it. But we'll see. We're gonna find out what's going on with it. Starting next. Yo, what's up? Have you subscribed? I didn't think so. How about you go down there and do that? Help me out. Help you out. Let me help you. If you're not part of the problem, you're part of the solution. Wait a minute. If you're not part of the solution, you're part of the problem. Subscribe. The way Kawasaki has the ECU set up in this fight, from the factory stock settings, is that secondary butterfly plate, secondary throttle plate, whatever you want to call it. I think it's called a secondary throttle plate in the service manual. The way that works is when the RPMs are under 7,000. In other words, now I am at about 6,500. Everything under 7,000, that secondary throttle plate only partially opens and when you hit 7,000 or wide open throttle my understanding is that plate fully opens and allows the most air to pass over it hitting the throttle that's controlled by the actual throttle the throttle plate so there's two I don't think I'm doing this very much justice there's a throttle plate that your throttle controls when you twist it, that opens and closes the plate. And then there's a second plate, the one I removed, that's controlled by the computer. There's a secondary throttle sensor that receives input from the ECU in terms of voltage. And when that voltage exceeds a certain number, it opens up the plate. What it's doing before it opens up is it's restricting the air, which thereby restricts your fuel because the fuel is also controlled by the ECU unless you change it with a, a aftermarket fuel controller, like an EJK. Then you've got control over how much fuel is put in. But from the factory, you're dealing with the ECU controlling how much air gets in and how much fuel gets in. And it does a fine job, I gotta say. When this bike was stuck, it ran fine. There was no problem. It was a little bit on the hot side. I think it was under fueled a little bit. But I didn't have a terrible time with it until I went and changed sprockets and the exhaust, then I started to feel that there was a little bit I could gain by making some changes. And that's what I did. So to recap the mods that I've got on this bike, I've got an EJK fuel controller. I've got a Dekelvik or Delkovic, I forget how you say it, Delkovic, I think. Exhaust slip-on muffler, the stock header pipe is intact. I've got an aftermarket air filter. It's just a foam replacement air filter though. It's nothing like a KMN or anything like that. And I've got different sprockets. I'm running 1446, I believe. And that's it, really. I mean, I've, I've done other things, you know, a pass plate, and, a luggage rack but in terms of engine performance i've just got the mods i just told you about and now i've taken out the secondary throttle plate and i'm i'm gonna be honest with you on this so far i'm not noticing anything 
But I'm gonna get up here and get onto some dirt. And we'll see because it doesn't take long when you're on the road to get up over that 7,000 RPM mark. In which case, if you had it stuck, that throttle plate would be open and you wouldn't be dealing with any problems anyway. So kind of muddy up here. We've had some rain, typical Florida weather, hurricane season. Haven't had any real storm problems yet, but I'm sure it's coming. All right, I'm in first gear. I'm gonna stand up. Going into second, my RPMs are about 4,500. I don't, maybe, maybe a little something there when I just gassed it. Let's see. I should be feeling a bog when I have the plate in. And I gotta admit that I don't really feel one right now. First gear. Hmm. Wasn't anticipating coming into such deep sand right here today. Wanted to touch this where I could get it. Although, this actually isn't too bad of a test because I'm bogging it down pretty good. Four thousand RPM. It's hard to tell. I think that maybe I think maybe there is You know what? I'm gonna have to give this one a pass. It's not like it's mind-blowing you know don't don't start to think that you got a klx 300r or a ktm here but i will say that it's pretty smooth power i'm in third gear and i can't really watch my rpms all that much but i'm still in the neighborhood of 4500 25 miles an hour. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Okay, I wasn't noticing it out on the street because, you know, you, you get in the first, second, third gear, especially when you're trying to get up to speed, 50, 55, 60 miles an hour, you're up pegging 7,000. You know, you, you've got seven grand over the hood, you're going to town on it. You don't even notice that that secondary throttle plate is not open, because by then it is. Now you're ripping up through first, second, third gear, up through the RPM range, at uh, a more conservative pace, maybe? Maybe, uh, or on the trail like I am. Maybe you're gonna start to notice that that is bogging a little bit and lagging. I, I guess that is really what was happening. I never noticed, so let me, let me back up for one second. The reason I never did this change, because I never really noticed a problem. I'm sure that it was there, right? Because my bike was stock. So I'm sure the problem was there but I never noticed it because I didn't have anything to compare it to. There was no reference for me. 
So if it was fogging, okay, big deal. I couldn't tell. The bike, so compare this to what I'm, I'm either riding this or I'm riding my Triumph. And my Triumph is a 1200cc triple engine. It redlines at 11,000, I think, somewhere in there. Like this redlines at 10. I don't notice any kind of power problems with that bike at all whatsoever. And then I come over and I jump on this. Right, and this is a 300cc bike. So mentally, I'm expecting that the bike is gonna be a lot less of a performer than my Triumph is. So when I start riding it, I'm not noticing that it doesn't have the same kind of oomph, that there might be a lag, that there might be a little bit of hesitation. I'm not keenly aware of it. But now, now that I've taken that plate out and I'm sticking around the 4,000 RPM range, 3,000 to 4,500 range, when I gas it, there is, there is no hesitation. I don't know that it's really giving me any kind of power increase. I don't, I don't think it is. It doesn't feel like it is, but it does feel like that when I turn the throttle, I am getting some results. You know, there's an immediate change. It's not like it's enough to pop the wheelie up. The wheel. It's not doing that on me. You know, so don't think that you're gonna remove this plate and be looping your bike just by blipping the throttle, because that ain't gonna happen. It's still the bike that it is. But you do feel a little change. This is that new construction they're doing. Yeah, you see, let me, uh, let me slow down here, take off from a stop. Now what you're gonna see here, or what I'm gonna try to show here, is hopefully this is catching the tachometer. But, all right, so from a stop, You see, you're up above 7,000 the whole time, really. So when you're riding like that, you're not gonna notice it, but now let's go, let's hang out for a minute in the 4,000, 5, 6,000 range. Now, if I gas it, it's pulling. I'm not noticing it as much out here. It does respond. Yeah, there is a response there, but the power is still whatever the bike had. It's just now that power, it's like, imagine this, imagine you had an eggshell under your accelerator pedal in your vehicle and you were pressing it, pressing it. That egg is gonna give some resistance until it breaks. And when it breaks, your pedal is gonna go to the floor. Imagine that's how this bike was with that throttle plate installed. You're giving it gas and it's responding, responding, responding as that plate opens. It's not closed open, it's a gradual open. But when it opens at around 7K, that's when you got the full power of the bike. 
I'm gonna come back in here again. Okay, that's first gear. Let's put it in the second gear. Now, it's not enough to pull up the wheel just by throttle. It's not gonna throttle up the wheel with this change. It might, it, well, I think it always would in first. Yeah, I like it. I'm happy with it. Now, go back and watch my other video where I did the removal. It's not a very detailed video, so don't go there looking for a step-by-step. -step. I get you to the point where you can see the throttle plate, but I do not, I did not record the actual removal of it. It took me about an hour, and most of that was drilling away at the head. In summary, here's what I would say. If your bike is out of warranty, or you don't just care about warranty, and you don't mind a little bit of effort if you decide to do it on the bike, then yeah, go ahead, remove the throttle body. You're gonna notice some gain. There's gonna be some gain, just like uh, I'm seeing here today in the uh, off-road portion of where I like to ride. You know, in that, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm thinking as I'm trying to ride here and talk, and it's not coming out very well. All right, what I'm trying to say is this. If your bike's out of warranty and you don't mind tinkering around, go ahead and take it out. You're gonna notice modest gains. In my opinion, it's not a huge gain. And again, that's my opinion. Yours may vary, especially if you want it to be gainful. You're gonna, you know, the placebo effect. You're gonna think that it is even when it might not be. But if you're the other guy, you're not terribly mechanically inclined, your bike's under warranty and you'd like to preserve that because I guarantee you this is gonna void your warranty, at least on the fueling part. So anything goes wrong with your fuel system, if you do this, you kiss that warranty goodbye. Um, then I would skip it. It's not worth it. It's not worth the hassle. Anyway, I'm gonna wrap this up. The uh, secondary throttle plate, yeah, I like it. I, I like it for off-road use. I don't notice anything on road, but out here on the trail, I think it did a pretty good job. I do notice that there is an increase in smooth delivery of power as I'm riding. So that's a good thing. Um, there can't be anything wrong with that. So do it at your own risk. Uh, if you're in warranty, I'd maybe skip it. You only got a 12 month warranty anyhow, right? 12, 18 months, something like that. Skip it until you're out of warranty and then knock yourself out. Do it, it's not hard. It takes about an hour, maybe two hours if you really don't know what the hell you're doing. And uh, that's it. So. Thanks, ride safe, and uh, let me know what your thoughts below. What do you think about that? Do you think it's something that you're gonna try? Uh, have you tried it, and do you have better results than me, or worse results, or about the same? Uh, I'd love to hear about it. So uh, thanks for watching. Come on back next time for another video, and ride safe, peace out.